Okay, guys, let's have a conversation about um, digestive. And in particular, let's start with the oral cavity. You should have this picture. So you'll notice the numbers down this right-hand side of this picture here. And then you'll notice some combining forms. So the combining forms actually match up with these numbers. So number one, the combining form is buco. Number two, it's chelio and or labio because there's two potentials. Um, three and four is pallido. So let's talk with these actually break down too. So number one, buco, refers to the inside portion, which is the cheek. Hopefully you can see that you're pointing to that there. Number two, chilio or labio, okay, is pointing to the lips. So those are the combining forms for the lips. Number three and number four are both pallido. It's something we would just call the palate or the roof of the mouth. And the reason it's divided into two is because um, there are two parts to the palate. Number three is actually right behind the front upper teeth. It is referred to as the hard palate because it is hard. It's got bone on the inside. Whereas number four is a little bit further back, okay, and we refer to that as the soft palate because the bone has disappeared and it is just soft tissue. Number five, uvulo stands for the uvula. Okay, which is that little portion that hangs down right in the center. Number six, there are actually two combining forms, glosso or linguo, and both of those refer to the tongue. Number seven, tonsillo. You can see it's pointing off to these little yellow guys on the side, and you can see some matching ones on the other side. Those are the tonsils. Number eight, gingivo. Okay, refers to the gums. Remember gingivitis, right? So inflammation of the gums, right? Gingivo is the gums. And number nine also has two terms. So denti, and it's one of the few times, right? We see I as our combining vowel. And odonto, okay, which refers to teeth. All right, so here is a nice completed picture. You can click pause to make sure that your picture is complete. And we're going to move on to organs of digestion. Okay, so this is the next picture um, that you guys have. And this picture is all of your digestive organs kind of as a whole, and then a couple of them are going to be um, close-ups. All right, so let's start with number one. When we saw the respiratory, we had trachea that led down into the lungs. And remember that the trachea is the windpipe. However, number one is actually pointing to the soft tissue that sits kind of behind the trachea, and that is your esophagus. And that's the tube from the mouth that's going to head down to organ number two, which is this little pouch right here, which is our stomach. Okay, so number one is the esophagus, number two is the stomach. All right, after the stomach, um, our food is going to head off into the intestines, and first it's going to go through the small intestine. And the small intestine is made up of three components. All right, the very first part of the small intestine, number three, is the duodenum. And I'm going to show you a labeled up version here. Okay, so D-U-O-D-E-N-U-M. That's the very first part of the small intestine. The second part of the small intestine is actually number seven over here, and that is the jejunum, J-E-J-U-N-U-M, followed by number eight, which is the third part of the small intestine, the ileum. So again, after the stomach, we're headed to the small intestine, and three parts of the small intestine in order are the duodenum, jejunum, and ileum. Next, our food is going to head into the large intestine, but I want to point out organs four and five. And the reason I'm going to point out organs four and five is that they empty their products into the small intestine, so they're not actually part of the digestive tract directly, but they certainly help with digestion. And organ number four you should recognize as the liver. And sitting up underneath, kind of tucked away, usually shown in green because the chemical inside of their bile um, is green, is the gallbladder. Okay, so four was the liver, five is the gallbladder. Now we're going to head out to the large intestine. And before we actually get to the large intestine itself, 
I want to point out number 10 here, and it's this little squiggly thing that kind of hangs off of the first part of the large intestine, um, and that happens to be your appendix. So number 10 is the appendix. So when we talk appendicitis, that's what we're looking at. All right, let's take a peek at the first part of the large intestine, and that happens to be number 9. And it's just this little portion right here where the appendix hangs off of, and it is called the cecum, C-E-C-U-M. The food then moves in an upward pattern, okay, through number 11, and to go upwards is the word ascending. So to ascend means to go up. We refer to number 11 as the ascending colon, as colon is the medical term for the large intestine. All right, as the ascending colon stops kind of underneath the liver, it takes a turn, and it cuts across to the other side of the body, which is number 12. And this is the transverse colon. Okay, so number 12 is the transverse colon. Um, and to transverse means to go across. It then takes a downward turn, number 13, into the descending colon. It, to descend means to go down. It then likes to take what I call the S turn, so it kind of looks like a little squiggle or an S. And this portion here is the sigmoid colon. In fact, if it looks like an S, it starts with an S, that is the sigmoid colon. It then straightens out into this portion that is known as the rectum, and at the end of the rectum, number 16, is a little circular muscle here just at the very end, um, which we call the anus. Okay, so let's take a peek again, right, at just the large intestine. So it starts here at the cecum, which is where the appendix hang on, hangs off. We go up the ascending colon, turns across to the transverse colon, and then number 13, the descending colon. Takes the little S curves, right, for the sigmoid colon, straightens out into the rectum and in the anus. Okay, so let's take a look at this in a different capacity and on a different picture that I've given you. All right, so let's just take a peek at the large intestine, which is this little picture. So again, We've come from the stomach through the three parts of the small intestine. So first the duodenum, then the jejunum, then the ileum. Then remember the food heads into the cecum, which has the appendix hanging off, up the ascending colon, across the transverse colon, down the descending colon, to this little S portion, which is the sigmoid colon, straightens into the rectum, ends in the anus. Okay, here we're looking at the stomach, right, with the very first part of the small intestine, that duodenum. We've got here, our great big and this dark purple here is the liver. Number two, right, sitting behind it is the gallbladder with all of its little, right, tubes and ducts that lead into the small intestine. And then this little yellow organ, and you can see the little bit of it kind of outlined behind the stomach. It mostly sits behind the stomach, but you can see this little piece here, okay, is the pancreas. All right, so if we look at it um, in this little diagram, what we're really doing is we're talking about the food as it starts in the oral cavity, which of course is a fancy term for the mouth, and it gets all the way down to its end point, right, is the anus. Remember, this is pretty much one continuous tube from here straight through to here. These little guys on either side are the things that just empty and help with digestion, but this portion down the center is the continuous tube. So remember, it starts with the oral cavity, and of course, there's some saliva glands in your mouth that contribute saliva. It heads down into the pharynx, which we saw in the respiratory system, uh, was the medical term for the throat. Down the tube, okay, right behind the windpipe, which is the esophagus, and into the stomach. From the stomach, we're headed into the three parts of the small intestine, and of course, in order again, to the duodenum, jejunum, and ileum. Remember that in the duodenum, we have the liver and the gallbladder that help to create that bile, and the pancreas, which gives us other digestive juices. After the three parts of the small intestine, we're headed in the large intestine. In the parts of the large intestine in order were the cecum, the ascending colon, the transverse colon, the descending colon, that little S-curve, right, the sigmoid colon, 
it straightened out into the rectum and ended in that nice little muscle that normally stays closed, which is the anus, where feces can then leave the body. All right, so this should help you understand at least the very basic parts of digestion, so that as you're looking at some of the medical terms I'm going to ask you to uh, break down, that you have a general idea of what it is we're looking at.